One of the most exciting aspects of pursuing the development of SSP technologies is their expected importance in diverse near to midterm applications. All of the spacecraft currently flying or planned from communication satellites to the International Space Station will benefit from advances in space solar power. The same will be true for many expected spin-offs of these technologies in earthbound applications. Moreover, most of the ambitious missions and capabilities planned for the future in space will be realized only if we can achieve our SSP goals and objectives. Whether launching a space business park or establishing a human outpost beyond low Earth orbit, whether enabling large-scale space tourism or sending a human mission to Mars, all might benefit from affordable and abundant space solar power. This next segment illustrates briefly some of the many anticipated benefits that will result from the progress we have made and that we hope to make in the future in the area of space solar power. Membrane structures are very thin sheets of film supported by deployable masts and booms. Large membrane structures will be used in space solar power satellites for the solar arrays and the solar collectors. Ultra-lightweight membrane structures are also needed for other NASA missions, such as solar sails and sunshades for large space telescopes. NASA researchers are developing concepts for packaging and deploying large membrane structures. The research underway in this facility is to study the integration of the solar sail materials, the membrane sails, with the ultralightweight booms. The studies are trying to determine the best methods for packaging and deployment of uh, membrane structures. Behind me you see a two-quadrant uh, model of a solar sail. This model deploys vertically, and as it does, it pulls the sails and stretches them taut. Part of the studies are trying to determine the loads the boom sees during deployment and the best methods for tensioning the sails to prevent wrinkling. These studies are being done with constant thickness scale models to validate the design tools we're using for future space missions. The test bed consists of a 10-meter wide triangular membrane supported by an inflatable column. The test bed has been set up in one of NASA's vacuum chambers, which simulates the space environment. It's important to test membrane structures in a vacuum because the air surrounding the membrane can change its dynamics. The vibrations of the membranes will be measured with laser beams reflecting from its surface. This information will be used to predict the behavior of large membrane in space. Under the Space Solar Power Science Program at laboratories at JPL, universities, and DOD facilities, a concentrated systematic development effort has been underway to use the basic concepts of SSP, beamed power, lightweight high-strength structures, and advanced solar cell technology to enable a new era of space exploration. Photons have different frequencies and different frequencies have different advantages. Microwave photons are easy to make and can impart large amounts of angular momentum. Optical frequencies, such as produced in this high-energy Air Force facility, have the advantage that the aperture of the transmitter can be smaller, an important factor in the cost of any system. The first step in the program is to verify the basic physics of moving a sail with light. This step must be done in a large vacuum chamber to simulate the conditions of space. The simplest way of verifying the physics is to mount a sail on a pendulum. The sail moves as the laser fires receiving momentum from the beam of light. Yeah, the results of this test were quite exciting for us. We actually measured the deflection of the pendulum uh, as a function of laser power. For the powers in the range of uh, 8 kilowatts on up to about uh, 14 or 15 kilowatts, what we measured were deflections up to about 12 degrees. And, uh, well, we demonstrated for the first time in history the measured uh, forces of uh, photon pressure on a real light sail material. Now that forces have been measured with the pendulum, the next step is to fly a sail. The first flight of a laser-powered sail is guided by wires. 
The first flight of a laser-powered sail verifies the basic physics. At JPL, a large vacuum chamber has been set up for wire-guided flights at microwave frequencies. At microwave frequencies, the wavelength of the radiation is on the order of the size of the sail. Because of this, the distribution of heat of the sail must be understood to prevent any burnouts of the microtrust carbon fibers. It is the high temperature of these sails that enable high accelerations, theoretically up to 100 Gs, that make the beam-powered sail flights feasible in the foreseeable future. The promise of this propulsion method can be put quite simply. With rockets, it takes about 10,000 years to get to the nearest star. With this new mode of propulsion, it would only take about 40 years. A robotic mission to the moon can mature space solar power technology and answer key scientific questions. For this mission, a lunar lander carries a robotic rover to land precisely on a mountaintop near the moon's north or south pole. Upon landing, the rover is deployed to the moon's surface. Based on our experience with the Apollo lunar roving vehicle, this rover can travel long distances using electrical power. The lander and rover deploy photovoltaic arrays to change light into the electrical power required for telemetry, laser beaming from the lander to operations of the rover. Subsystems are initially checked out on the lunar polar mountaintop in continuous sunlight. Then the rover uses laser light, beamed from the lander, to descend into lunar polar craters where the sun never shines. Development of a novel actuator powered by radiant energy. Future exploration and development of space require new developments in actuator systems. The ideal actuator for space applications would be strong, lightweight, require minimal maintenance, and use readily available energy resources. A novel actuator with many of these features will be demonstrated here. This actuator is comprised of a shape memory alloy and an integrated energy collection mechanism. When combined, this system produces a highly energy efficient actuator by initiating a phase change, and thus motion, in the material due to the addition of collected energy. Consider the proposed actuator system depicted here consisting of a support cable with integrated shape memory alloy center. When properly controlled, this actuator is capable of changing length and producing significant tensile forces. In the space environment, solar radiant energy is a readily available power source that will be harnessed to drive the actuator. The actuator is completed with an energy collection mechanism to concentrate radiant energy into the SMA. For example, by using a thin film lens or parabolic trough. This concentrator controls the level of input energy or shields the SMA to allow actuator cooling. A prototype of the actuator was built to demonstrate proof of concept. The simple prototype is made of cylindrical concentrators located about a shape memory alloy wire. This wire is radially constrained to lie along the focal length of the concentrators. Temperature and position sensors along with drives for the concentrator complete the system allowing actuator control. This video clip demonstrates alternately concentrating and shading light on the shape memory alloy. A key characteristic of this actuator system is that a small amount of energy expended in orienting the concentrators can result in large amounts of output actuator energy. SMA behavior is characterized using readily available models. For example, the phase fractional envelope plots shown. These plots demonstrate the ability of both the mathematical model and prototype to follow a prescribed displacement profile. Note that saturation of the actuator at high displacements is predicted in the mathematical model and observed in the physical model. Why should this proposed actuator be used when other actuators are available? It has substantially lower power requirements. It can significantly save mass. It can easily be implemented in a highly distributed actuator system. This novel actuator has been developed and tested and has demonstrated high efficiency, reduced weight, and maintenance costs for space applications. <laughs>